Good morning everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Poya and I normally do videos about traveling um, on my motorcycle. I have a Royal Enfield Continental GT 650 which I've um, just done quite a bit of touring with to, to Norway, Sweden, uh, Finland, Denmark. I actually went all the way to the North Cape with my bike. Um, which was an amazing trip and currently I am back in Manchester where I live and the, the bike is getting some work done in terms of maintenance and uh, some upgrades and also there's plans with some customization. However, today uh, it's a beautiful autumn day. It's, uh, it's been raining quite a bit this week but today is a Saturday the 13th of November and it's just absolutely beautiful and I thought it would be an amazing opportunity to take a drive to Yorkshire Dales which is not far from where I live uh, only about a couple hours um, and take you take you along with me so I am driving my BMW E30 um, which I've owned for almost five years now I am the second owner so the route of plan for today is to go towards north of Yorkshire Dale to a place called Rubelhead Viaduct and then go further up to a pass called the Buttertubs Pass. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I actually never been to, to either of those places. Um, I was doing a little bit of research uh, yesterday. I've been to York at Yorkshire Dales quite a few times. Uh, but I was doing yeah, a little bit of research yesterday on places to go um, and I watched this uh, this video and, uh, and these passes and they looked absolutely stunning so I thought right some nice weather's coming up um, and the E30 is, uh, is good to go I actually washed it yesterday so I thought what an amazing opportunity to to take a drive with the A30 and take you along with me. So I'm currently in central Manchester in Ancoat and I have just over 60 miles to go showing me one hour and 45 minutes. What a beautiful day. A little bit of the usual traffic in town. So, um, this is a BMW E30 uh, 1989 model that. Uh, originally started its life as a 318 so when I purchased the car five years ago from the original owner um, it was a 318 um, however the engine at the time uh, wasn't running quite smoothly it had a bit of a tapping sound going on uh, took it to a couple of mechanics and they were saying probably needs a rebuild so I looked into different alternative and I decided to swap the engine out with the 2.5 M20 engine which would have been the original engine if you would have purchased the 325 um, back in the E30 era. So I've decided to uh, go ahead and swap the engine and that turned into a little bit of a disaster because the engine I bought off eBay had quite a, quite a few parts missing from it unfortunately. So it turned into a bit of a puzzle trying me trying to find all of these parts from eBay, different scrap yards, forums. Um, so that was a lengthy process. Uh, anyways, managed to finally gather all the parts and uh, got the car running. The car, again, when I purchased the car, uh, it had quite a bit of uh, rust. Uh, in the in the in the known areas of these cars, like the archers, the the sills. Uh, so 
when I was living in Scotland a few years ago, uh, in the Orkney Islands actually, I took it to a local garage and did extensive uh, welding and changing quite a few panels and also um, resprayed the the panels that were changed and worked on. So I have done quite a bit of work on the car um, and it's it's not perfect by no means. It's still a work in progress. I absolutely love the car. Every time I think about letting it go, um, I jump on the driver's seat, go for a drive and I'm just smiling. It's unreal. It is it is my only car that I've ever ever had, so I bought it five years ago. Um, so I'm the second owner. I bought it from the from the gentleman who owned it since brand new. Uh, bought it in 1989, full on documents, a folder full of all the paperwork, all the documents, all the invoices, and he actually paid thirteen thousand five hundred and seventy nine um, pounds for the car and that is with a few upgrades I believe the car was 10,500 pounds standard this is a coupe um, diamond black 318 and he added the the manual um, sunroof the stereo an alarm and that took it to over three thirteen thousand pounds and back in 89 that, that must have been a lot of money it's still a lot of money now, but back in those days, and um, I still have the original check that he made a deposit with, um, which I think is, is quite cool. So I have all the documents and all the paperwork that um, that came with the car. Since then, obviously, the, the, the car has changed quite a bit with the work on the panels and also the engine work. I'm driving out Manchester now, so I'm heading north towards Burnley and then uh, making my way towards Yorkshire Dale National Park. I'm very, very looking forward to this drive. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, and uh, I don't get to drive this car as much as I like to. Um, so I'm very, very excited about today. You might think why this car, why the BMW E30, uh, why would I buy a car like this? And the story goes back to over 20 years ago when I was about four years old. Um, my dad had a E28, um, I think a 520. I vividly remember that car. Um, he had it for a short period of the time. And I remember looking at that car as a kid, thinking, what a beautiful car. The round headlight, the kidney grille, um, all of that, it was just amazing. And ever since I've been in love with the classic BMWs, really, like 80s, 90s, that sort of era is, is my favorite. One of my favorite cars ever made by BMW is the E34 M5, um, one of the last hand-built M cars by BMWs uh, by BMW in the 90s. I've always wanted to own one, and around about five years ago, I decided to finally go ahead and purchase my first classic BMW, and. Uh, it wasn't quite as romantic as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the car needed quite a bit of work. Uh, the, the rust situation and that was quite, uh, yeah, quite a lot of work that needed to be done. So it's definitely been a learning curve in terms of uh, buying the right car and all of that stuff. But then again, it's just part of the character of this car. This car means so much to me because of all the, the memories we've had together. It's still not complete. It's still, a, like, like I said earlier, it's a work in progress. Uh, my goal is to, to get the car to, to how a 325i would have been out of the factory. It just... Uh, 
go pass. Yeah, so the goal is to get it to how a 325i would have come out of factory originally. Um, I would like to upgrade the suspension a little bit. Um, again, nothing over the top, just to make it a better driving machine. Um, I know some of these cars are quite well known for um, being heavily modified and all of that. Um, which, which I think is cool, but it's not quite my scene. Uh, I quite like to have it original, um, but improving the drivability. So I would like to improve on the suspension, perhaps some coilovers, uh, springs, um, and also the differential um, is still in the old um, 1.8 engine differential so the gearing is uh, is not quite correct the gearing ratio so that would be the next on the list I would uh, I would love to upgrade to a LSD um, but they are quite quite difficult to find especially in good condition so that would be the next on the list I have also um, managed to find the original uh, 15 inch BBS, uh, I think the basket weave wheels they call them, uh, which is quite hard to find. So I have, I've just managed to find a set and uh, I've sent them to be uh, refurbished. And I just think with the, with the, with the bigger wheels and the slightly lower um, stand, the car just looks so much better. I mean, as it is now, it's it's a beautiful car um, but with the bigger wheels slightly lowered I really think it's one of the most beautiful BMWs um, ever built in my opinion the E30 era a legendary legendary car really I just love the simplicity of this car I mean the, the instrument panel, everything simple. I have a fuel gauge, temperature, speedometer, and I also have the, the interesting <laughs> fuel economy gauge, that miles per gallon, which that needle is just going up and down, which I, which I actually quite like. I think it's, uh, it's, it's part of the character of the car, but I, I very much doubt that is uh, that uh, is is accurate by any means. Right, I've just stopped to grab myself a quick cup of coffee and also do a do a walk around of the car so you can see. called the courtyard I'm hoping that uh, to be able to grab some coffee so I'll see if they have any any coffee going what a beautiful place
nice little coffee stop. I'm not far from my uh, first destination, Ribblehead Viaduct, which is just about half an hour away. And I am going to open the roof a little bit. That's better. still hear me okay I just had to open the sunroof it's too nice of a day to leave it closed what a beautiful road this is absolutely amazing Okay, that was a Ribblehead Viaduct. What a beautiful place. And now I need to turn around and basically I'm going further up north towards uh, a pass called uh, Buttertops Pass and then sort of doing a loop and then coming back down south of Yorkshire Dales. And I can't get over how calm and beautiful is today. And I need to open the roof. That's better.
Okay, I just had to stop to take a few moments to soak this all in and appreciate how beautiful this is. Um, it's starting to get dark now and my camera, camera's battery uh, is about to die so I just wanted to uh, end the video now and uh, thank you very much for watching and joining me today on this beautiful drive um, to Yorkshire Dales. I hope you enjoyed watching it and uh, let me know let me know what you think about this video and if you would like to see more content on the on the old uh, E30. Once again thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon in the next one. Bye bye.